Nvidia just released the RTX 4060, which I have over here. Aww. And this is one of the most affordable GPUs you can buy right now. But there is a big but. As a creator, is this going to be good for you or not? Because we had some bad news with the 4060 Ti and I have some mixed news with the 4060. There are some good sides still though, but how does it compare to the likes of 3060 from previous generation? Is the 4060 actually better? It's gone smaller, as you can see. Let's take a look at the performance and the sponsor of the video. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Because this is like the budget end of the card and the MSRP for this is a $299 in the US or $279 pounds here in the UK but the thing is actually when you buy this Zoltac version you get um, this Spider-Man version which is actually the MSRP version you get just some goodies and stickers and stuff inside you don't get a bag this time but you get a little character and things if you're interested you might like it it's also the OC edition but I think most of the cars out there are going to be OC editions so then the GPU is actually called AD 107 not 106 as we have on the 4060 Ti it's the same process node and the CUDA cores have been shaved down quite a bit from the 4060 Ti this is 3072 CUDA cores if you look at the 2060 Super it's even less at 2176 but the 3060 from previous generation has actually more CUDA cores, 3584. The TMUs are also less than the 3060. The tensor cores though, we have more than the 3060, double the amount. The RT cores, we also have more on the 3060. The memory type is, is GDDR6 and we have 8GB of VRAM. Uh, which is the same as the 4060 Ti, but the 3060 has 12 gigabytes of the same memory. And when we look at the memory bus, then we again see a little bit of an issue there. This is only a 128-bit bus, which is the same as on the 4060 Ti. The 2060 Super, in comparison, is 256, which is double that, and the 3060, 192. The memory bandwidth, as you can see, is the lowest in the bunch here as well, and we'll see how that reflects on benchmarks later on. The bus interface is PCIe Gen 4X 8 slot, which is actually kind of bad news for those who are running maybe very old 1060s and you want to upgrade. That means that if you don't want to upgrade any of your other parts of the PC system and perhaps you're running something from 10th gen Intel or even earlier and if your motherboard doesn't support or the CPU doesn't support PCI Gen 4, this card, sorry, this card is actually going to run at X8 PCI Gen 3 bandwidth. Just so you know, the TDP is 115 watts and if I used the MSI afterburner we can shift it a little bit and get 130 watts pulled from there, get a little bit more, the card's going to perform absolutely fine, you get extra 13% you know, power through it, you get a little bit more performance if you want to do that, but that's about that. And the MSRB is 299 dollars. So if you're looking at the market right now, where does this one slot in there? You can get a 3060 for 279 or 270 even. Some of these I can see on Amazon in there. If you're going to look on eBay or somewhere like secondhand market, you can get those cards even cheaper. So the 3060 is actually cheaper right now than the 4060, which it should be, right? The previous generation should be cheaper. But what about before? then let's have a look at those benchmarks if you want to check out my test bench setup and how i'm testing this then check out i'm going to leave the test bench each item in the description below and bear in mind these are creator benchmarks if you're not familiar with this channel already first of all looking at geekbench 5 something that the gpu does generally lots of different things like shaders and calculating light and um, 
all sorts of rendering different parts of what GPU do, does. It's very synthetic, but you might see bits of each of these little tests that this uh, test does in other programs. But here we can really see easily where does the GPU line up and how much better or worse is it from previous generation. So the 4060 Ti is actually quite a bit better. 22% in OpenCL, 35 in CUDA and 21 in Vulkan. And if you look at the 2060 Super, you can see we're about 10 to 16% faster. But the 3060 from previous generation is only 5 to 6% slower in the OpenCL and CUDA scores. And Vulkan score is pretty much exactly the same as previous generation. So then Photoshop application. Now this is an older version of Photoshop that I'm using and I know that newer version of Photoshop does utilize some more GPU aspects and some of the AI features you can use a GPU acceleration in there and it's good to see that even photo editing applications start to utilize GPU more which just makes the PC even faster. But generally still the difference between the worst GPU and RTX 1490 for example isn't that big. So here we can see that the 4060 Ti is 5% faster and looks like everything kind of makes sense right in the new generation but then the 2060 Super is 8% faster than the 4060 Ti and we started to scratch the head and wonder what is going on. The GPU score on the 2060 Super is 28.8% faster which is ridiculous. Now the 3060 is 31% faster in the GPU scores and about 10% faster in the overall score for Photoshop. So the 3060 is faster than the 4060. Let's keep going. Moving on to video editing and Premiere Pro, the RTX 4060 Ti is about 3 to 6% faster than the 4060 and in GPU score about 10% faster. So there's quite a you know, jump between the two um, tiers here, 4060 Ti and 4060. But the 2060 Super is actually 2 to 4% faster than the 4060. So a card from two generations ago is still beating this 4060 in Premiere Pro in every single aspect. As you can see, GPU score about 8.6% faster, extended export score faster, everything is faster, standard live, standard live playback is faster even though we've got a uh, two generations new media engines in there i know they're encoders but still and if we're looking at the 3060 which interestingly performs a little bit slower than the rtx 2060 super is about 1.4 percent faster in the extended overall score but about seven percent slower in the standard overall score also the live playback is uh, slower on the 3060 probably because of the higher clock speeds on the 4060 just because the card clock speed also affects the media engine inside when the card is uh, running faster for example running faster clock speeds the media engine runs faster as well which means that it plays back or can encode or decode video better as well and that's what we can see compared to the 3060 because the clock speeds have improved on the 4060 but the GPU score is 15% faster on the previous generation. So, uh, yikes, that's uh, not quite good news. And if you look at the extended export score as well, where we actually can use the encoders and the clock speed should make the encoder go faster, it's 14% faster on the 3060. So yet again, the 4060 doesn't look that impressive on Premiere Pro. Bear in mind, the previous 3060 had 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the memory bandwidth was better, the bus was better than this 4060. Going to After Effects, we can see that the 4060 Ti is about 3% faster in the overall score and the GPU score is about 2% faster than the 4060 here. The 2060 Super is faster than both of them. So wait a second, a card from two generations ago is faster than the 4060 and the 4060 Ti. Interesting. The 3060 is even faster than all of these. As you can see, the 3060 is the fastest in this bunch. The GPU score is 11% faster than the 4060, and overall score is 4% faster. Uh, 
sorry, what is going on here? Are we going forwards or backwards here? Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and here I've got to make a very big note. The 3060 benchmark for Resolve is actually DaVinci Resolve 17.4.5, which you can't actually compare 17, DaVinci Resolve 17 and DaVinci Resolve 18 benchmarks because there is a big difference. For example, the 2060 Super, if, if I compared it between exactly the same system, but separate versions of the software, DaVinci Resolve 17 and 18, then I got about 10% difference in there. When we're looking at the 4090, for example, then the difference was about 17%, okay? So in the higher end scale, about 17 and lower end of the scale, about 10%. So right now there, what I'm showing you is the previous version. If we calculate about 10% better, then you can see that those scores look absolutely ridiculous. As you can see, the 3060 is about 4% slower than the 4060. And because I don't have the 3060 in here anymore, then um, I'm afraid I can't show you this. And you might be saying, what the heck is this card then? Well, this is actually 3070, but because the 3070 from Zotac and 3060 are exactly the same, I can show you this card and, you know, you don't even know this is 3070. The extended and standard overall score would be faster than, again, the 4060. Uh, embarrassingly, the 8K media score would be about 20% faster, Fusion score maybe about 3% slower, and GPU effects about 15% slower, which just shows, again, that the RTX 3060 is a better option for DaVinci Resolve, especially when you get 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So now that's about it for the bad news. The good news are going to go in a moment, but why is this so bad then? And I think it's due to the bus, the memory bus, because that is 128 bit. The 2060 Super is 256 and the 3060 is 192. And as you can see, that makes a huge difference in the creative applications here, where we utilize the VRAM and the memory of the card is just the bottleneck is the bus there. In a moment, you're going to see 3D benchmarks and you can see that when we take the memory bus kind of out of the equation and just see how fast is the card in calculating and rendering some of the 3D scenes where we don't have to utilize a lot of the VRAM and just you're looking at the pure rendering performance of the card, then you can see that the new generation tensor cores and TMUs and CUDA cores, they actually make a big difference. But in an application where we have video editing or photo editing or After Effects or something where it's mixed, even in 3D when it's mixed, when you load some of your assets on the VRAM, now we have less of as well, it's not going to be as good because the lower memory bus. So in V-Ray, the 4060 Ti is about 10% faster in the CUDA and about 3% faster in the RTX cores. The 2060 Super, as you can see, is about 50 to 56% slower than the 4060, which is a big gain. And the 3060, again here, is 29 to 233% slower in the CUDA and RTX cores. So you can see that the 4060 is actually better in the actual, you know, rendering performance of 3D. In Blender, we can see the same kind of results here. The 3060 is up to 32% slower than the 4060. The 4060 Ti is about 16 to 24% faster and 2060 Super is quite a bit slower there as well. Roughly about the same as the 3060 but still quite a bit slower. In Octane Bench, I don't have the 3060 in here anymore, so unfortunately I don't have the results here, but you can see that the 2060 Super is 32% slower, and perhaps the 3060 would have performed roughly around the same. The 4060 Ti is only 14% faster here, actually. If we look at the conclusion of 3D rendering, actual 3D capability of this card, then it is quite good. You can see that if we purely render some stuff on it, samples by merit in Blender or V-Ray, it is good. But the VRAM becomes an issue here. Now, the power draw. The card pulls only 115 watts, which is actually good news. And this is some of the good news of this card, is that we've moved forward and cards have become very, very efficient. So you can see compared to the 3060, 170 watts, it's pretty, pretty crazy how much more efficient this 4060 is. And that's why this card can be so small and be completely fine. Even with 113% uh, power limit, it's gonna be completely, completely fine. I think there's only one heat pipe in here as well. So in terms of temperatures, you don't need to worry about this card. And if you do wanna build something very, very small, this card will fit into most of these builds because it is truly very, very small in every single aspect. Now, in terms of the power connector, we only use in one eight pin 
a PCA power connector, so no fancy power connectors. You can just plug in one there. Could have been six pin as well, but eight pin, I guess, is better, right? Now, some of the other good sides about this card. What else do you get with the 4060 that you don't get with a 3060 is AV1 encoding. Now, this card doesn't have, like all of the other NVIDIA 40 series cards, don't have dual encoders. Only the 4070 Ti and above have dual encoders. By the way, can I just make a mention here where I do think that the 4070 Ti should have been a 4080 or it's a cut down 4080 like Nvidia said in the first place because if you look at laptop GPUs, laptop GPUs only 4080 and above have dual encoders. But on desktop, suddenly the 4070 Ti is the one that has dual encoders and anything above has dual encoders. This one here is single encoder, but you do get the AV1 encoding support, which means that if you want to stream to a streaming platform or a stream video, AV1 streaming is so much more efficient than have a look at my secrets for the NVIDIA 40 series cards where I go a little bit more into it and I'll show you why AV1 is so much better in terms of quality and bandwidth and all of the benefits of AV1. Highly recommend you check that one out. So then, for creators, is it worth it or not? And honestly, I've come to the same conclusion. What is Nvidia doing? The lower you go with the 40 series cards, the worse the performance is compared to the previous generation. The higher end cards absolutely blow everything out of the water compared to the previous generation. The 4090s, like I know this sounds ridiculous, but for creators, this is like the best bang for buck. It is just so good performance. When you start going down the price and the town down of the tiers, they start to become worse and worse and worse and worse of a deal. Now, this one here, I would actually probably, if you don't need AV1, I would probably go with a 3060 just because you get 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which a lot of the applications now is much more beneficial. It's a shame that this is eight gigabytes of uh, VRAM. It could have been 12 because then, whoa, we might have had a little bit of a different story there. But right now, looking at photo video editing applications, I can't really recommend it. I'm sorry, I, I really would like to, but I can't. And the same with 3D. I would like to recommend it, and even though this potentially has good power there and you can use this, but again, if you're actually using it in an application and start to fill the VRAM, the memory buses start to become an issue. And again, it's not going to be better than the 3060, for example. Now for creators, I'm really struggling to make sense of this card. For gamers, perhaps that could be a different story. So go have a look at some of the gaming reviews, but right now, not really unless this card is much cheaper than what we get with the 3060 because right now you can get the 3060 for the same price or even cheaper than this one that performs better so i don't know but if you want to build yourself the best bank for buck create a pc and you're thinking look i'm sick of spending money on stuff that actually doesn't give me performance then i highly recommend you check out the best bank for buck create a pc build guide in the description below there's four parts and I'm gonna explain everything you need in those there. Pick the one that's closest to your budget and then you'll see upgrades, downgrades. And remember guys, if you like the video, hit that like button. Bye bye.